Hello, my name is David Cunninger. I'm a director of R&D at Thermo Fisher Scientific uh, within our cell biology business. And it's really my pleasure to uh, share with you um, uh, some descriptions and uh, applications of our uh, relatively new uh, Gibco B27 Plus culture system, and uh, specifically its, its use in uh, both uh, stem cell and primary cell applications. So I thought I would start with an uh, uh, outline of the presentation. Uh, I'm going to give a, a very brief history on the B27 supplement. Um, and going into an overview of the new system. And then really the, the, the bulk of the, the presentation is gonna focus on um, the applications, uh, benefits, values of the new system in uh, neuronal applications. I, I know this is for our 24 hours of stem cells uh, presentation uh, or uh, meeting, uh, but I, I thought it would be useful to include uh, some data on, on primary neurons uh, also, I think just for, for broader context as well as I know many, uh, many laboratories will use uh, both I, uh, PSC uh, stem cell derived and, and primary rodent mo models um, for, uh, for parallel types of studies. And then I'll, I'll end with a brief summary. So uh, a one, one, one slide history of the B27 supplement. Uh, this was uh, invented over uh, 20 years ago by uh, Greg Brewer um, and uh, was subsequently commercialized as the first serum-free uh, supplement for neuronal cell culture. Uh, it was originally um, uh, developed uh, to help maintain um, ex vivo uh, cultures of uh, primary rodent neurons and, and tissue explants. And it's been, um, you know, since then, uh, h highly used um, thousands and thousands of citations, and, and it's really sort of a, a, a core reagent for, for um, neuronal, uh, neuro, neurobiology research, and, and uh, more recently transiting into uh, numerous and relatively broad applications in, in stem cell uh, differentiation systems. Um, one uh, fun fact, the B27 na name is derived from, uh, the B is from Brewer, uh, last name of the inventor, and it was actually his 27th uh, iteration of the formulation, so, uh, so that's where the name comes from. Uh, and then, you know, over time, as I mentioned, um, as, as the field has evolved, uh, applications have uh, become uh, more diverse, uh, more sophisticated in many ways. Um, the, you know, the use of the supplement ha has grown. Uh, but, but also leading, um, you know, it's, uh, the, the broader applications have required additional modifications, supplementations, um, tweaks to get it to, to work for these uh, sort of new and, and uh, maybe outside of the original uh, focus of the media. And as we've been manufacturing this over the years and have uh, developed a few sort of variants of it. Um, you know, we, we've gotten a lot of feedback. Uh, we've had a lot of understanding or gained more insight into uh, kind of the shortcomings or really the, 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 the growing needs and applications and maybe where the, the classic version of the supplement felt was, was coming up short. And so this was really the rationale that led us into the development of the B27 Plus formulation. So uh, this slide is uh, introducing the, the culture system. So uh, it's, it's quite, if you're familiar with the classic B27 and neurobasal combination, this is going to look very familiar. Um, the new system is B27 plus supplement, uh, which is uh, a 50X uh, that, that comes typically or standard in a, in a 10, 10 ml uh, volume. Um, and uh, uh, neurobasal plus medium uh, in, in a, a sort of standard uh, 500 ml pack size. And together, these uh, added together, this creates the, the B27 plus neuronal culture system. And I'll sort of be using that, um, that, uh, this term throughout the, throughout the rest of the talk. Um, so, so really, you know, what's changed? Um, surprisingly, we made relatively modest formulation changes, uh, formulation and manufacturing changes. Uh, that had a surprisingly uh, big impact on performance. And, and so, you know, the, form, the, uh, the formulation was optimized, um, I want to say in, in, in relatively small ways. Um, of course, it was proprietary, but, um, you know, we did not add additional small molecules or growth factors, so, so no exotic components were added. 
Um, and, and the manufacturing, so, so we did uh, modify how we actually make this, which, which can have uh, substantial impact on consistency and performance. Uh, we tightened up uh, criteria for several of the key raw materials that goes, go, that goes into the, the product, the finished good, as well as um, more stringent uh, QC uh, re release testing. So uh, again, relatively modest changes or minor changes in the formulation, and I, I think uh, had a surprisingly big impact. And we'll we'll get into that in the subsequent slides. So again, uh, first I'm going to go through the the primary neuron data. It's going to be structured uh, quite similarly to to how I'm going to walk through the the, the, the PSC or stem cell derived data. But but again, I, I think uh, contextually, I think it was uh, useful to include uh, even in a stem cell focused. Uh, conference. Okay, so um, this slide illustrates really the, the key benefit that we see in both the stem cell derived models, uh, uh, sorry, both the, the primary cell and stem cell derived models. And that's essentially we, we see consistently um, a greater viability, a higher, a greater viability and higher quality neurons, um, uh, you know, over time. And so this is this these two photomicrographs. This is a primary rat cortical neurons at, at three weeks. Those cultured in the B27 plus is indicated on the uh, sorry at, at the plus is indicated on the right, or the classic B27 system on the left. Um, the green is uh, MAP2 staining. Uh, blue is uh, Herx uh, dye or DAPI, and uh, the the red staining or purple co-staining is for a neural marker HUCUD. And so, what, what's very apparent on these images uh, that in the right you have both more neurons. Uh, they have more extensive uh, neurite networks and branching. Um, this is really uh, something we consistently see uh, across all the neural models that we're looking at. Um, and there are also I think substantial uh, uh, downstream benefits with respect to maturation, uh, cell health, and uh, performance in terms of electrophysiological activities, which we'll, we'll discuss in more detail. So uh, again, looking just uh, you know a, a time course here, we're looking at uh, rat cortical neurons. Uh, again, uh, the top row is showing uh, cells. Again, these are immunocytochemical images. Each column is, is a different week, as indicated at, at the top of the slide. Uh, the top row is the classic B27 neurobasal uh, culture conditions, and then below is our new PLUS system. So again, as one can see, um, you know, we, we see these benefits early. They start to really manifest themselves and, and really become quite distinguished in terms of cell numbers and, and extent of neurite uh, a branching um, you know, within two weeks and, and beyond. Uh, moving on, similar results uh, are seen with, uh, you know, with, with uh, other rodent uh, species. So in this case, we're looking at mouse cortical neurons. Um, you can see, again, the B27 uh, uh, column to the left, the B27 uh, plus column uh, just to the right of that. Uh, similar types of staining here. So, so we're looking at MAP2, uh, HUCHUD as a neural uh, marker. This, the, the staining for HUCHUD is more restricted to the cell body area, and this makes uh, the uh, uh, image analysis and automated uh, automated image analysis and capture and quantitation much more straightforward uh, for us. So, many of the the, the subsequent fields where our slides that will show. Uh, quantitation of neural counts are, are going to be based on the QC, QD data, but, but we have very high concordance with, with MAP2 staining. It's just, it's just sort of easier to count the cell bodies than the, the, the extended processes. Uh, below both of the ICC images are phase contrast uh, uh, images of, of the equivalent fields, and then to the right uh, is the quantitation, the QC, QD quantitation of the, the, the neural cell numbers uh, at three weeks. So again, <clears throat> much like the rat data I showed previously, we have really uh, substantial uh, increases in viability, uh, significant increases in viability over time in the, uh, in the, in the mouse model also. Uh, one of the consequences of this that, that we find is also uh, a key benefit is the, um, because of the, the higher cell survival with the um, uh, plus system, uh, you're able to use a seed uh, fewer numbers of cells. So particularly if, if your cell source is uh, limited or if you're purchasing them commercially, 
Um, this can really be a, an added benefit. You can, uh, you know, increase your N, uh, it tests a different number of conditions, just get, get more, more bang uh, for, uh, for, your, for your limited cell numbers, if you will. Okay, so, so now walking uh, away from uh, just the, the sort of gross cell number uh, data and then looking a little deeper in terms of um, uh, maturation and performance. Uh, so in this case, we're looking at a comparison of this is the rat cortical neurons, and we're looking at uh, quantifying neurite outgrowth over time. So uh, in the upper phase, uh, sorry, the upper uh, 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 images, you have um, uh, this, these are false colored images uh, uh, that are quantifying, um, that generated from uh, an SN Biosciences Incusite Zoom platform where we're doing live cell analysis of, of neurite length. Um, the false coloring is so the cell bodies are in yellow, uh, the B27 uh, classic uh, cells are on the left, and those uh, incubated in the B27 plus system are on the right. Uh, the neurites are marked in this case by the purple extensions, and that's actually what the software is quantifying in these, in these live cell uh, images. And what you see below them is the, the mean neurite length, uh, or average uh, uh, neurite length from uh, from a, the data set that's, that's represented above. So, so much like the increase in cell number that we saw, we actually see an increase in um, the extent uh, and rate of a neurite extension. And this is uh, an indicator of, of cell health and, and relative maturation state. Uh, if we look, uh, again, at, at a different set of, of markers, and this is going to be um, looking at pre- and postsynaptic markers in, in rat cortical neurons, um, we, we see a, kind of a similar overall trend. Uh, in this case, we're looking at day 28. These are, these are fixed cells and um, uh, stained with uh, in, either in the top row markers for uh, looking at the uh, presynaptic structures. So in this case, uh, sort of a pan-synapsin antibody, excuse me, that's um, shown in green. Uh, so on the upper upper left, you have uh, cells that have been uh, cultured in the same lot of cells, actually, uh, of course, throughout this whole uh, all these panels, that were cultured in the B27 uh, classic system or in the plus system on the upper right. Um, clearly, you can see a, a, a substantial difference in the extent of synapsin expression, uh, as indicated in green. Uh, these also decorate the uh, neurites and axonal bodies uh, much more clearly in the PLUS system. And then if we look at the bottom, uh, the bottom row, we're looking at uh, staining, uh, in this case in green, for PSD95. This is a postsynaptic marker. Um, and again, much like we saw uh, above, we have in the, in the B27 plus conditions, uh, m much higher expression of PSD95 and much more targeted localization within the, uh, within the axons themselves. And, and so, um, again, these are consistent with the uh, increase in uh, maturation of the, the uh, neurons uh, that have been cultured in the B27 plus system. And then one other thing we, we, we looked at uh, here, and when we were curious about, um, as, as you probably can appreciate, uh, that these, uh, the, the cultures, the, the primary rodent uh, neural, uh, neural cultures are not really pure. They're actually mixtures of, of, of different cell types. So they're different types of neurons, because uh, they're, uh, as well as uh, glial cells, as well as, as, as other cell types. And so, so we were very curious about um, what types of neurons are being you know, maintained uh, over time in these two culture systems. So, so in this case, we've started with, again, the single um, lot of um, rat cortical neurons. We're staining at day 28 um, with cells that have been cultured in either the B27 uh, classic or B27 plus system. And um, so if, if we look at the, the left half, the, the lower uh, images, uh, the lower set of images, um, we're looking at um, 
So it's actually we're trying to tease out what the relative population of the excitatory inhibitory neurons uh, are within these uh, within these rat cortical cultures, um, uh, you know, incubated or, or maintained under the two different media conditions. And so we're looking at on the lower left the two panels. We're looking at expression of V-glut, which is a, a marker for glutamatergic or excitatory uh, neurons. And we see relatively similar ratios of these when we when we do the um, um, uh, Salomics-based quantitation or high-content uh, analysis of these. Um, and then if we're moving up to the upper right, we're going to look at, we're looking at uh, staining uh, for uh, inhibitory neurons or a class of inhibitory neurons, so the, the GABA-positive or GABAergic neurons. And again, we see, even though we see more total cells in the B27 plus uh, conditions, as we consistently see this, if we look at just the relative ratio of cells, um, they're, they're, they're quite similar, too, for the GABAergic. We see, if we count these, we see approximately 12% of the cells that are uh, GABA-positive in the classic and 14% uh, in the PLUS system. And, and where we see a real divergence is, is when we're looking at a subtype of the uh, GABAergic neurons. These are parvalbumin or PV-positive interneurons. And we, and we saw a really a, a rather dramatic difference here. We saw less than 1% of the uh, cells that were maintained in the B27 uh, classic system were PV positive, where we had uh, about 7% of the cells in the B27 plus system were, were PV positive. So, um, you know, why is this important or interesting? Um, to us, we, we think the PV interneurons are, are a very interesting population of cells, and they've been reported to play a, a really a, a reg, a, an important regulatory function in controlling the activity or synchrony between these networks of excitatory and inhibitory neurons, so, so maintaining sort of appropriate network, networked activity. And, and I think this may come into play uh, with some of the later slides I'm going to show. Okay, so, so moving into activity um, of the cells, so a little bit of a primer on the multi-electro array uh, system. So, so this is um, basically a, a, a plate-based um, uh, analysis method to assess electrical activity of, um, of different cell types. So obviously neurons, uh, cardiomyocytes are another uh, cell, cell model that are, that are widely used on this platform. Uh, the image on the, uh, the left side is a photomicrograph of, in this case, uh, showing the array bed, um, well, mouse, uh, mouse cortical neurons, which are a little bit hard to see here, uh, sitting on top of in this case, the 16 electrodes and the, the electrodes themselves. Uh, so this, these electrodes are uh, embedded in the bottom of, in this case, it's a 24 well plate. Um, and so the little balls on the end of the uh, the lines here are, are actually the, physically the electrodes themselves. And so these electrodes can can sense electrical activity. Um, in the cells that are in proximity to them. And so we've used this, and in this case we're using the Axion Biosystems Maestro Pro platform to do all of our MEA measurements. Um, and what the graph on the right is showing is, is just a mean firing rate. So, so essentially we're looking at just spontaneous activity uh, as measured on each of those little, uh, the, the 16 um, uh, sensors in the, in the embedded in the array well. Um, over time, and so and, and across different culture systems, and so what you can see is the activity starting from uh, you know day, day five uh, out to day 35 is the activity increases, and what we have is the three different media conditions are B27 plus in the dark blue, the classic B27 in kind of the intermediate blue, and then this is a competitor media. Uh, this is the SM1 brain fizz system, and and what we see is that uh, initially Initially, the SM1 brain uh, FIS system shows pretty robust activity, but this tends to trail off uh, by approximately three weeks, uh, and whereas the B27 plus activity is really uh, maintained, uh, uh, increases steadily over time and plateaus, and actually gives you a, a, a large uh, assay window that, that's really quite robust uh, over time. So. Moving to the next slide, this is going to dig into the array data a little bit more, uh, uh, it, it, utilizing different uh, parameters that one can tease out of this uh, spontaneous activity. And so I've shown uh, two, two um, 
images on the left here, that these are actually from uh, Axion's website where they, um, uh, to help identify and, and uh, to, to visualize the type of data and the type of calculations that can be done and then how you translate that back to the biology that you're studying. So essentially, if you think of this uh, as this horizontal line with these little vertical hashes, these, can be, these are uh, uh, indications of electrical activity uh, at, at a given sensor, and you can see there's, there's, uh, there, there can be groups of them or, or uh, these sort of clustering of spikes. The spikes have a fixed duration, that, well, have a duration that can be measured. The interburst uh, uh, intervals can be calculated as well as the overall burst frequency. So that's for an individual electrode. Then, as, as if you'll recall, the previous slide I showed that, that that array actually had 16 electrodes. So we can actually measure each of those electrodes simultaneously, and then and and look at the activity uh, spatially. So not only temporally, uh, you know, over time, but spatially in terms of they're physically separated, but but are they electrically coupled? And so what we're looking at at the middle, the middle graphs here are really assessing. Um, these are these are called raster plots. So we're looking at synchronous bursting. Um, and, and in this case, we're looking at day 28 rat cortical neurons. Um, these cells. The upper uh, set of data is with the, the, the neurons that were incubated or, or maintained in the B27 plus system, the middle set uh, in the classic B27, and then the lower set, uh, this is in the brain phys media. Again, this is all at the day 28 uh, uh, um, in uh, culture day 28. And, and what you can clearly see is we get um, a highly synchronous, uh, regular bursting uh, with the B27 um, uh, plus system. So, uh, and this is the, these traces are based on the calculated on, on the data that comes out uh, directly from uh, from the 16 electrodes. So, so very very robust, very consistent electrical activity. Okay, so I'm going to uh, that was kind of the primer. Uh, many of the same approaches uh, that were described uh, that I that I, I walked through with the the uh, primary neurons will go through with the stem cell derived neurons. Um, but but before we get uh, into the actual data, I, I think it, it's one thing to to point out and and something that we've been we've been looking at extensively um, is that you know th there's really a number of different ways to to get at stem cell derived neurons. There's a number of different approaches to to derive them, and the the figure on the left is uh, kind of our. Uh, approach at illuminating or, or highlighting those. And, and so really, so if you look at the upper route, this is um, uh, sort of a, a random differentiation to an embryoid body, uh, followed by you know, plating and having these neural rosette form, and which they spontaneously form, and then those can be picked, uh, you know, isolated, manually picked, and then uh, expanded and, uh, you know, can provide a very robust and reliable source of uh, neural stem cells. Uh, the middle route uh, would be, again, starting from a pluripotent stem cell on the far left and then using a more of a, a, a media-based, uh, we're calling the monolayer uh, approach. And this is, um, you know, an example of this is using our uh, neural induction media where you, you basically stimulate or drive uh, using cult culture conditions, drive the formation of the, uh, the NSCs themselves with high efficiency. Uh, and then the the lower route. This is what we're we're terming the the factor induced method. And th this is really um, uh, more of a genetic approach, where where one uh, delivers and overexpresses a neurogenic regulatory factor. Uh, NGN2 is is an example of this, where you can uh, add, add add these factors to to pluripotent stem cells, for example, uh, induce their induce their expression, and they uh, you know they will push these cells to to neural fate. Um, all three of these are, are really commonly used. They, they have the different pluses and minuses, and I, I really won't get it and get into them specifically. But, but what I will, will say is that we, we thought it was important to assess whether or not or the impact of the B27 plus system um, in, in each of these different types of, of NFC to, to neuron models. And, and what I'm going to just have sort of summarized a little bit on the left is what we've seen overall is that um, much like the data with the primary neurons, we've seen improved neural health and better long-term survival. We've seen accelerated maturation uh, as assessed by, by neuronal outgrowth and, uh, and synaptic marker expression. And again, improved performance um, as assessed by uh, MEA analysis. So uh, just walking through that data, 
Uh, in this case, um, we're looking at uh, improved long-term survival of, uh, of neurons that were derived from rosette NSCs. So the, the images on the left will show just, you know, these are fixed images of the neurons. So again, HUC, HUD, MAP2, and uh, DAPI in blue. Again, we're using the HUC, HUD uh, expression to get the, the, the neural counts. Uh, very clear just from the images that there are many more neurons with the B27 plus system. <laughs> Excuse me, those are um, as quantitated uh, to the graph on the right. And again, this is survival at four weeks. So this is uh, very much in line with what we saw with the, the stem cell or with the primary uh, rodent neurons. Similarly, if we look at uh, neurite outgrowth uh, in uh, in this case, we're looking at, again, this is another rosette-derived uh, human iPSC uh, neuron model. If we look at uh, the uh, extent of uh, neurite outgrowth over time in cells that were incubated in either the classic B27 system, um, and again, the pseudocolor images from the, um, from the S and Zoom are shown on the left uh, versus the uh, pseudocolor images from the cells cultured in the B27 plus system are shown on the right. Um, Again, increased uh, uh, extent of neurites. Uh, we see the quantitation to, to the right. So, so again, a, a sort of an overall consistency and performance uh, to what we saw with the primary neurons. Um, looking at this case at synaptic marker expression, uh, uh, in, in this model, we're using the monolayer-derived NSCs. Um, and again, we're showing the, the images on the upper left. Uh, those are cultured in the B27 Classic or the B27 Plus. We're looking at um, synapsin. Oh, you know, I'm sorry, these colors, these are actually mixed up. Uh, synapsin is shown in green. MAP2 is in red. This uh, legend is, is mixed up. I apologize for that. But But what you can see is that uh, the the increase in the punctate, the green staining, is much higher in uh, the synapsin. Uh, sorry, in, in the B27 plus uh, uh, cultured cells, uh, the punctate staining is, is exactly what you'd expect to see for uh, for for synapsin. Also, um, we quantify when we're quantifying that using our um, Salomex CX5 platform. Again, we see much like you can see visually when we quantify quantify this uh, expression over time over many fields and multiple wells, we see a, consistently, uh, incre a consistent increase in synapsin expression over time. And then if we look at uh, activity, and so we're going we're to look at, a, at, at activity a couple of different ways. One, one by um, just mean, av mean firing rate or average, uh, average spikes or average activity per time. Um, which is uh, shown in the graph on the left. Um, you can see comparing actually the B27 plus system to uh, the brain fizz, uh, to a competitor uh, a system, uh, not the classic B27 in this case. Um, and and uh, with this data, this was actually done uh, by, uh, by, this was work uh, done by scientists at Fulcrum Therapeutics um, who were uh, looking um, at the activity, studying the activity of uh, one of their uh, in-house IPSC uh, neural models that were, that were uh, generated by the factor-driven approach, uh, which is uh, outlined uh, on the right. And in this case, they're doing uh, expression, uh, overexpression of NGN2 in the first uh, period and then uh, incubation with the, uh, the various maturation conditions. So um, again, a, a different model, but showing uh, very consistent results in terms of high, highly active cultures um, from uh, maintenance and, and maturation in the B27 plus system. And uh, this is the last functional data. This is uh, looking across, these are the, the similar raster plots to what I, I had showed earlier. In this case, we're looking at a synchronous activity, bursting activity in monolayer or neural induction um, uh, uh, NSCs that were derived from the neural induction media. Um, and if you look starting from the upper left, these are cells in the B27 plus system. Um, uh, the B27 Classic below that, and then to the right, the, the brain test system. So again, we see much more uh, synchronous and regular bursting activity with the B27 Plus uh, maintained 
um, NSCs. And, and I would point out that we were able to, uh, it's not shown here, this is uh, day 31 uh, that we're looking at, but we were able to maintain the, this, this highly networked activity for, for more than four additional weeks with the B27 Plus system. So it was a fairly stable assay window. And, and this is something I think we, we're continuing to optimize. I don't, I don't think we've completely nailed. Um, uh, I think we can actually get this to, to work substantially better uh, than we have uh, thus far. Okay, and so really one of the, the last things I wanted to just point out is, um, you know, guidance for the use of the B27 Plus with the PSC-derived neurons. And this is something we have, um, you know, we, we've been appreciating um, uh, more and more uh, lately and, and, and are providing, I think, hopefully is a specific and useful guidance to, uh, to folks who are wanting to use the system for the NSC-derived models. And, and really that, that we're finding that, that, that the addition of, that timing is really the key for, for, for the use uh, to, to get the optimal performance using the B27 Plus system with the PSC-derived neurons. And so what we're, and, and it's really, what, what we think is going on is that the, the 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 real the benefit of the system comes after the NSCs are committed, and so in this case where they start to adopt this neural neural morphology, they start to have these sort of projections. Um, and uh, you can start to really distinguish the neurites. They're extending out and contacting neighboring cells. So, so the the images at the upper the the upper uh, phase contrast images are really uh, these are cells that are approximately NSCs that are, have been plated. Uh, you know, A is just like one day in. Um, I think B is from uh, two 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 or three days in, and then C is this is uh, day five or day six. And so once you the cells have adopted this uh, more extended branching morphology, it's really the ideal time to switch to the B27 plus system, and, and that's indicated in the schematic below. Um, you know, one other uh, thing, as we've been working with these various uh, ways to derive the NSC, something uh, also that's, re that's really become quite apparent to us is the, um, the, the requirements, the composition, the media, the growth factor requirements uh, for the neural differentiation aspect to, to, to basically in, induce neural differentiation from, from the, the various NSCs can, can vary dramatically depending on the derivation method of the NSCs. So, so basically, some, some some types of NSCs are much easier to uh, get to form neurons than others, and so uh, we think that we've we in our hands this is a really important optimization step. Um, we provided some guidance um, on this, at least some of the sort of easier or harder ways, or some bigger or smaller hammers, if you will, to sort of push the cells uh, uh, to to neural um, uh, neural maturation neural commitment and maturation uh, in, in our B27 Plus user guide um, for, for stem cells, and this can be found uh, on our website. You can just search for B27 Plus, and, and you'll be able to find that uh, relatively easily. Okay, and so with that, I'll just go to a summary, uh, try to keep the summaries uh, nice and tight. So really, um, you know, the, the, our summaries here are just general guidance for uh, using the products for primary neurons or stem cell derived neurons, and and and, and which will hopefully uh, enable you to derive the benefits that I've, I've highlighted in the, the prior slide. So, um, for general guidance for our for for culture and primary rodent neurons, is basically just switch where wherever you were using B27 Classic, you can switch to B27 Plus. Uh, you will have um, what we find consistently is higher quality neurons. Uh, you, you will have more neurons over time. So, so one of the um, uh, one aspect of this, though, is you you may actually want to or need to uh, reduce seeding densities, and and and, and because you're going to end up with more neurons than than uh, than you had uh, initially with the, with the classic, as well as the addition of serum or other components that might have been required using the classic system uh, may not be required at all here. So so you may uh, that be an, another way to to potentially reduce costs and variability. Uh, lastly, uh, general guidance for the using the B27 Plus for the stem cell derived models is, is really just trying to uh, re uh, recoup or recapture what I, what I had mentioned in some of the earlier slides that that it's really t timing is the important part and that the, the the switching over to the B27 Plus system 
after you have committed neurons is really what, what we have found to be the key to success, uh, and, and that this seems to translate across multiple derivation methods in terms of how, how one could uh, generate NSCs. And with that, I will uh, thank you for your time, and I hope you found this valuable, and uh, I think we'll end it there. Thanks.